This time on Pedal Box, I'm building a windscreen surround, I'm fixing our hacky suspension from a couple of episodes ago, and I'm going to strip the whole chassis down so I can flip it over and do some work on the underside. After last year's failed attempt to put a windscreen on using the Mercedes SLK one I found on eBay, I found this in the local scrapyard. It's from a Smart for Two and it's nice and tall and doesn't curve too much so we can rake it back and it'll fit really nicely. I'm going to try and make a windscreen surround for this so we can put this away and still know roughly where things are going to sit. And if you like what we're doing, subscribe to the channel. To make the windscreen, I started with a heavy-duty cardboard-aided design template, the shape of which was transferred onto some steel, and I cut these two pieces out. They'll be formed into a single panel which forms the bottom of the screen surround and gets curved to match. The sides are made of one-inch box, split into an L-shape, and this will form the recess that the screen sits into at the side and give it some rigidity to stop it flexing. I've shortened the recess down to about half an inch and then made a couple of cuts so that I can bend it round and tack it back together to match the curve of the edge. So that's the first three sides of our windscreen surround done. We've matched up these two pieces of metal at the bottom so that they join nicely and they fit properly and actually made sure that they fit really nicely and tightly up against the edge of the windscreen. These two pieces are done and will go on to the end of here but there's one more bit we need to add on to the bottom after we've welded those two pieces together. The lower lip is actually formed from an offcut which happened to be about half an inch and matched the side already and it was curved. This will sit around the bottom of it to stop the windscreen sliding out the bottom once it's on the car. I really don't want to break another one of these. So we've got this front edge all tacked up and I've trimmed the end down to match here so we can start folding this corner round to join up with the end. This gives us the maximum amount of edge we can possibly get in order to weld the two together so we get a really nice strong joint. So we just need to look at this and start bending it round and just keep going until we get to where we need it to be. So with those three sides done, we can just tape another piece of cardboard in place and then mark out the top curve and then cut that down to size and we'll make another strip similar to the way we did at the bottom in two pieces and fit it across the top. That's the top piece in, we'll put it together in exactly the same way as I did the bottom and then welded it between these two uprights. Now I haven't got any video of that because there was a lot of back and forth just trying to make it and tweak it to make sure that it fit and in the middle of it I managed to crack the screen as well. So that's a second screen down but it will still work for prototyping because it's basically in one piece. I have added this little strengthener across the top just to keep it in plane when we lift it up it's very very flimsy because there's no cap on the top of this like there is on the bottom of there but it means that we can take this whole thing off like that and put it on the car and we don't need to worry about cracking the windscreen more I guess. Yesterday was pretty successful and I've put a couple of clamps on just to try and position it in place with a bit of tube and I think it's a little bit far back at the moment. It really needs to go about six inches further forward to give a bit more space around the wheel so we can put an instrument cluster in and fit things a little bit easier. So I'm going to add a couple of bits onto the front of this uh, support for the back of the steering column and just give me a little bit of adjustment to see where this wants to come. At the moment anybody that's getting in with the seat at the farthest back position is going to end up taking a big old bite out of the top of the windscreen. Now I've got these two supports in, I've also added a couple of spaces just to lift the front of the windscreen up a little bit more so it will be easier to bring in with the front of the car when we start doing the bodywork. Now there are a few changes we're going to have to make to this because getting in and out of the car you need to put your foot on this outrigger one side or the other and there's nothing there currently and just having a floor isn't going to be enough to do that. So we're going to have to add in another couple of pieces of steel from just underneath the seat where this member connects out to the edge and then cross brace it so there is a decent footing to stand on and then we'll have to work the bodywork to make that fit. Now trying to imagine roughly where the roof pillar is going to be coming across here, we can try and climb out of the car. Now I'm quite tall so I need to put the seat all the way back in order to do it, but I can get my foot around and then I have to put my foot on here, on there, and I sort of 
slide out quite neatly. It's not too difficult, but it's definitely not the easiest car in the world to get in and out of. So getting the surround in is a really big step, but before we can weld it in and attach it to the car properly, we need to do a few other things. The big one is flipping the chassis over so I can weld the underside of these extensions and a few other bits that we haven't done because welding upside down is hard. Another job we need to do is get these front arms sorted. Now, a while ago, I started rebuilding these and made them adjustable at the front, but there's another modification I need to make. So first, we'll have a look at when I made these adjustable and then finish them up once and for all. So last episode, we jury rigged our suspension stubs here with a couple of nuts on the inside, just to try and see what we need to do to take out the excessive caster that we had. So these are extended about as far as they'll go. We can't get much more adjustment out of them in order to retrieve that five or six degrees that we had. So we're going to add a couple of spare pieces in that we had from our rear suspension. This is a very short turnbuckle and we have some left and right hand thread rod. So we're going to add these into the forward section of this upper arm to adjust the point for our upper pivot further outboard to reduce our kingpin angle, but it will also induce some positive caster, which is what we want to return the steering wheel back to a level state. It will make the steering a little bit heavier and we're not running power steering, but the front of the car is pretty light as it stands, so it shouldn't be a problem. The new turnbuckle on the suspension fits almost in the original length of what we had. So when it's completely closed, it will still be slightly longer than we have now, which is great because we do want a little bit extra length on this. The right hand threaded stud is just formed from three nuts that I've welded together and shaped to fit in. These get plug welded exactly the same as the other inserts for the left hand threads. This is our new adjustable arm all assembled. We can put it into place and test it. But because we've extended the forward member on this, we've also lengthened the distance between these two pivots. So with this in place here, you can see these now no longer fit. So we're going to have to shorten this arm down slightly in order to bring this pivot back towards the front to fit in between our existing mounts. We probably should have built it like this originally, but hindsight is 2020. The forward joint on the car isn't sitting right, and it's just, say, binding on the rear of the mount. To fix this, we're going to make the front mount exactly the same as the rear mount using a cast-off part from a previous build. This is actually one of the original upper rear control arms we fit onto the car way back in episode 11. I've cut the ends off so I can attach them onto the upper arm, and I've shaped the forward mount on the upper front arm so that I can attach this new stub perpendicular to the chassis. This will allow the joint to sit in a much better position and stop any binding we would have had when it was crooked. So that's the suspension arms hopefully done for the last time. Now we can get on, strip the whole car down, which fortunately some of it's already off, flip it over and start working on the underside. The bottom of the chassis is looking really good now. I've been over the last couple of days grinding and welding in all of the bits that we hadn't done before when the chassis was the other way up because we couldn't get to them. Also taken the die grinder over and cleaned up a load of little bits of spatter and gruff that had got everywhere. So it's all looking really, really smooth. But before I can finish and put the car the other way up again, I need to deal with this bracket. Now this bracket has two areas that need fixing. This brace needs to go in from the lower portion of this frame to the rear portion of this frame. So this needs to sit in here, and the other side has one that's almost identical. It's slightly kicked in because of where the gearbox mounts. The other thing I need to do is shorten down this bracket. 
I've just put one of our regular hind joint arrangements into this bracket and you can see there's a huge gap. Now, this is because the original test fitting pieces we used were off the TT and they were a very wide direct joint. We want something a lot easier to manage, a lot thinner and a lot more customizable, which is why we're going to use these. But unfortunately that means this needs to be compacted down. So I'm going to cut this off, weld a new one onto this end and fit this brace. And that should be the underside of the chassis done. Well, that's the underside of the chassis done. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, that'd be great. Check out our merch at shop.pedalbox.show and you can support the channel at patreon.com slash pedalboxshow. Besides getting the floor completed, I've got quite a few other little jobs done. So we've got some nuts welded in for the centre section of our cooling system and I've taken off the extra mount at the back here and we finally adjusted this so it actually fits properly to our lower arm. So that's really good. We no longer have a massive stack of washers each side, but we do need to order a couple more misalignment washers just fill in the gaps. Thanks very much for watching. Next time, hopefully we'll have this flipped back over the other way and we'll start reassembly to the most complete this car has ever been.